Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to this first impressions walkthrough show and tell, I guess, of the Cute Little Lenormand by Sarah M. Lyons. Okay, it has a unicorn on the cover. Did anybody doubt for a second that I would end up with this at some point? I resisted and resisted, but then I saw this on Book Outlet for like, I think it was like eight to $10. It may actually still be there now, I don't know. You'll definitely wanna check that out. If you've never heard of Book Outlet, Book Outlet is basically like a discount bookstore. I guess it's kind of like online bookstore. It's kind of like a half price books or something along those lines, but it is called Book Outlet. And they have a Canadian um, site and I often check there for deals on books. I definitely always keep an eye out there for decks because they do show up now and then. And this little Lenormand deck had showed up. I think somebody mentioned it in the Supportive Tarot Facebook group that this was on Book Outlet. And I was like, well, I mean, if it's on a discount, like why wouldn't I get it? But it is primarily really a book. It just also comes with a deck. So we're going to check that out together. We're going to get the cards out. I might need a sharp object, I just realized. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna take a peek. So let's, I guess, just start by focusing on the book. But I'm kind of excited even just opening this front cover because the end papers are actually a quick guide to the Lenormand. So this goes through card 24 and then I'm assuming, yeah, it goes on the next page to continue to card 36. And you have basically a quick reference guide. So you have all of the Lenormand cards numbered one through 36 here and here. And it basically gives you the name and a quick little description or meaning for each one. So if you were working with Lenormand, you'd have this quick guide handy, ready to go, which is super useful, um, particularly for somebody who's newer to Lenormand. I think it's really nice to have such a quick, easy way to get what you need. Love that. I'm noticing right away, oh, we'll have to get into the cards, but I'm noticing right away, right there. I'm noticing right away that we have Querent and Partner, which is a gender neutral way to look at the significant and their significant other, and I think that's awesome. So we have Cute Little Lenormand, it's a color book, and let's take a look at the contents. So we have an introduction about the Lenormand, getting to know the cards, the card meanings, vignettes and tableaus, the grand tableau, conclusion, resources, journal pages. Oh, oh cool, okay, sorry, we'll get to that, uh, and acknowledgements. So there's an intro, a little bit about the Lenormand. Side note, Lenormand is not like the tarot, it's so true. Uh, it's a very different system. If you don't know, I guess we should pause for a second. If you don't know what Lenormand is, it is a divination system. I use it a lot. I find it to be very fortune tellery. And if that is your vibe, or if you want a system that's very like, I think focus more on prediction and like real, um, it feels very different than tarot, right? Like it's, it's not the kind of thing I would go to for a personal growth reading, but it's wonderful for prediction. I really enjoy working with it. So there's some ex exercises in here as well as a glossary of terms, which I think is awesome. Try this, a month-ish of Lenormand. Oh, this is like a challenge. Okay, that's really cool. And then we get into card meanings and we have a page, it looks like. Oh, a couple pages for every card. So it goes into, the, so the writer, or also known as the Cavalier, it's associated with the Nine of Hearts. The planet association is Mercury. The Zodiac is Aquarius Gemini. I don't know how accurate that information is because I'm, I'm familiar with like the basic meanings, but not all the associations. Feelings are anticipation and the pacing is fast. So that's interesting. Then you have a section for key themes. That's going to be your quick reference sort of meaning of the card. And then you have an overview of the card's meaning. Then you have information on reading the writer. And then sister cards, which is super interesting. So the ship is forward movement, the stork is transformation and change, and the letter is messages, positive combinations and negative com combinations, and questions for the writer. What messages are in store for me and what part of my life am I in need of a sudden shakeup? What changes am I hoping for? So maybe what we'll do in this video is after we go through the cards, we'll do a sample reading and we'll refer to the guidebook to create our, our reading. So we go through card meanings, I'm assuming without any interruption, yep, until we get to... Where's our change here? Where does it switch up? Okay, so there's the last card, the cross. And it talks about what's up with the corner cards, which are the playing card references. And then there is a list of the playing card, the poker card um, association and its meaning, which is super interesting. So the six of hearts, good luck, and the Lenormand card is the star. Seven of hearts, unreliable or fickle friend, and the tree. I don't know how accurate these cardomantic meanings are for the playing cards, but I think that's super interesting um, to see it laid out like that. I've never seen a book do that before. Yeah, it goes all the way through the whole deck. So cool. And it, it does talk here. She actually, it's interesting. She says strange, right? A few of them do make a little bit of sense. I highlighted the ones that at least somewhat seem to correspond. But for the most part, the interpretation of the cards 
don't only not match up, they're complete opposites. Okay, so she's demonstrating a point here, which is super interesting. And then there's another try this activity here. Then we get into vignettes and tableaus, and it talks about different ways you can read the cards, how to start the reading. This is really cool. This is really comprehensive and way chunkier. Like when you look at this, this is a pretty chunky book for what I thought I was getting and for the price, oh my goodness. I mean, it's normal cover price is $30 Canadian or $21.99 US. That's nothing, like that's not, it's nothing, but like it's a really affordable price for the information that seems to be included. Uh, lots of different ways to read readings. Okay, I'm actually kind of excited about this. I thought this was gonna be cute and fun, but it's got quite a bit of depth. This would be a really fun one to work with and kind of learn Lenormand with this book. I feel like it would not leave you wanting. Really, really cool. Okay, so, oh my gosh, try this gossip column. It's a different, okay, I'm, I'm excited. There's some really fun sounding um, exercises in here. Then it talks you through the grand tableau and how to do the grand tableau, which is a reading in Lenormand that lets you read all 36 cards at like basically at once. Um, talks about how to do that. That's so cool. Talks about houses, pacing, timing, different houses and what, oh my gosh, this is really cool. This is way, 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 way more involved than I thought it was going to be. Okay, that's pretty exciting. Maybe we'll take an exercise of re a reading from this, not a grand tableau, but maybe we'll take a smaller one and do that as our sample read. Conclusion, resources. Just curious. Ah, yes, good. My my favorite um, Lenormand book so far is The Essential Lenormand, which is by Rana George, and that is listed as a resource, which is great. And there's even some websites as well, which is cool. And then we have our journal pages. So these are literally pages where you can write down your intu interpret that ah, intuitive interpretation of all the cards, your gut interpretation, notes on the cards. This is a separate section. You get three card vignette practice pages, including a little checkbox. This vignette made me feel happy, validated, sad, tired, hopeful. And you could probably, if you wanted to, just photocopy these pages so you have more to use for yourself or just copy the format into your bullet journal, which is kind of cool. Um, and then we have a nine card tableau, a couple of those practice pages, and then a couple of grand tableau practice pages. So that's really great. And then we have our acknowledgements. All right, let's get into the cards. Can I do it without a sharp object? Probably not. Okay, I was able to just use tweezers and lift the plastic seal off here. And then when I got into the cards, they were separated into two piles and they had more plastic wrap on them. These feel nicer than I was expecting them to for the kind of cards that are in the back of a book. There's no perforation. I don't. I didn't have to separate anything. It's a nice feeling little deck. Like it's definitely thin cardstock and kind of papery. There's not gonna be any kind of a core in here. But it's supposed to be the cute little Lenormand, so let's see if it lives up to its claims. Let's see how cute it is. First, let's look at the backs. Aren't those pretty? So you actually have the different symbols of the Lenormand on the back, right? We have the scythe and the house and the mountain and the heart, so that's really cute. All right, let's just zoom in here. All right, so we have a writer, which is a person riding a unicorn, which I love, Clover ship. I like that the lines are really clean. It's really easy to spot what we're looking at. With Lenormand, you just want a clear, like at least I do, I want a clear uncluttered image of what the card is. Tree. Clouds. Snake. I like that the snake doesn't look mean or, you know, it's just, just a snake. Coffin. Bouquet. Scythe whip sometimes the broom or the whip and the broom birds oh they're so cute child i like the bandit on her knee love that the fox bear star i really do like this illustration style it's really quite clean and nice the stork the dog the tower garden sometimes called the park, the mountain, the ways. I do prefer when there's two um, paths, right? Um, I feel like you could see this as like one is the well-paved path and one is going off-road off that direction, but I feel like it's, I prefer this to look show an actual fork in the road or something because usually there's a choice involved, right? The mice, heart, ring, book, letter 
Here's what I was talking about. I thought I saw this in the little intro. So we have Querent and Partner. I love this so much. I also love that neither is really clear which one is like masculine and which one is feminine or anything like that. You've got some nods to either direction. I like that because it feels like it's not forcing even in this like clearly gender neutral attempt to create like this is the best way to do it with Lenormand in my opinion because traditionally it's like the lady and the lord or the man and the woman um I like this I've seen person cards before I've seen other ways of doing this but I really really enjoy Quarant and Partner with no people on it I really like that a lot the lily sun moon key it's like a regular house key that's great fish I do prefer to see multiple fish, and this is just nitpicky stuff. It's just, just based on the meaning of the cards as I work with them. Anchor and the cross. Love, 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 love. Okay, so let's zoom out. Let's try a little sample shuffle. I mean, it doesn't seem too terribly insubstantial. I have for comparison's sake. So this is a really lovely Lenormand deck called the 1889 Lenormand. It's an independent deck. As far as I know, it's still available and still in print, but I just want to kind of compare our cardstock. So this is a really nice hefty cardstock. So yeah, it is about, so this is 350 GSM, I'm pretty sure. So this is probably like a 300 or a 290, like at best, right? Which is fine. Um, and you can see the size difference here. So this is like, um, this feels like a classic playing card size. Like if I got a deck of like bicycle playing cards, this feels like that size. I don't know if you'd call that poker size. Um, and then this feels a little bit smaller. But just to give you an idea, so I'll show you the shuffle of this like thicker cardstock, which this is pretty stiff, actually. It's a little stiff, a little bit harder to shuffle that way. And then these feel like they're probably going to shuffle really easily because they're just a basic, simple. Oh, they've got less. Um, I was worried they were going to flex too much, but they've got less flex than I was expecting. So they actually feel like they'd hold up. That was a nice little ripple shuffle. All right. All right, little Normand. I get you. I see what you're doing here. It's actually pretty decent. Um, again, I usually go into sets like this that come in the back of books like that with very, very low expectations, but actually this is normal. This feels normal. It doesn't feel like an especially, like if somebody handed you this deck or handed me this deck, I wouldn't necessarily think this came out of the back of a book, right? I would just be like, oh, okay. It doesn't feel like spectacularly luxurious, but it doesn't feel as cheap as I was expecting. I hope that sounds okay. I hope, I hope you guys know what I mean by that. Um, really a nice shuffle. I could do this all day. All right, so let's do this. Let's pick a exercise or spread from the book and do that spread together using these definitions. So let's find our table of contents going to vignettes and tableaus 117, um, which are basically spreads. Like that's basically what that is. So it talks about reversals. That's interesting. Um, three card vignette. So think of the three card vignette as the standard Lenormand reading. Yes, it has a beginning, a middle and an ending. It tells a complete story. It's a great simple standalone vignette and is my go to for daily reading similar to a one card tarot pulls. This vignette can be read basically as first card, then second card and finally third card. You can also break it down into its fun fundamental two card combination. So A plus B and B plus C. Um, so let's see here. Um, an exercise there that involves working with another person okay so let's I love that the example is will I get to travel this year it's like no it's COVID times we know that right yeah okay um I think I think we're just gonna do I'm not gonna worry about there, there's no special spread positions in here or anything that I'd be referring to so I think I'm just gonna do a standard three card spread let's think of a sample question so Let's just do a, what do I need to know about how my day is going to go tomorrow? And let's just see. We'll just see what comes up. All right. So I'll interpret it the way I would normally interpret it. Um, I haven't done a Lenormand reading for myself in a bit. So, well, I might be a little rusty, but I'll interpret it the way I would normally interpret it for myself. And then I will look up the meanings in the book and see if that changes anything. So what do I need to know about how my day is going to go tomorrow? Oops. Well, that was a terrible shuffle. All right, I just want to keep shuffling. It's actually really easy to shuffle. Okay. I always cut the deck. It's just what I do. So we have snake, sun, and clover. Oh, all right. So at a glance, I would say snake, which is trouble to me, the sun, which is positive, like good things, and like so like positive, happy, 
and the clover, which to me is like a little bit of good stuff, right? So I kind of feel like the day's going to start out kind of uh, questionable and then get much better. And the sun could literally mean I'm going to get out in the sunshine or literally that our weather's going to improve tomorrow. It's been very overcast today, so it could literally mean the sun is coming back out. And then it's going to end on a happy note, on a little positive note. I don't know. That's a very basic kind of interpretation, but Lenormand kind of reads in that very basic way. So let's take a look at, actually, let's look first at this little cheat sheet for all three cards and see how that shifts my perception. And then we'll look at the individual pages. So we have seven, the snake, it says betrayal, manipulation, a snake in the grass. Yes, definitely trouble. Um, but more specifically dealing with a problematic person, right? The way that they interpret it. And then the sun card, which is going to be happiness, success, achievement, positive outcome. So yeah, that works, especially with my interpretation. And then going back to Clover, which is card number two, a stroke of good luck, a small victory. So I kind of feel like maybe it starts out, somebody's kind of re like raining on my parade, right? Sucking the fun out of the day. But I have a good day anyways. And in the end, I kind of maybe, maybe I realized that this person was just being petty and like I'm able to move past it and everything's good, right? So there's a bunch of different ways to interpret it. So let's look at the longer definitions now. And let's start with card number seven, the snake. <coughs> all right. So I'm going to read this whole page for snake, but I'm not going to do that for all three cards or we'll be here forever. But it'll give you an idea of how the guidebook reads. So it says here, betrayal, manipulation, snake in the grass. So the key themes here are exactly the same as you get in this like little cheat sheet guide in the first couple end papers there. Overview. The snake is pretty much always a negative card and it's a clear warning to beware, to look around and make sure everyone around you can be trusted. The snake warns of a manipulator in your midst, someone who is not on the up and up, who does not have your best interests in mind. When the snake appears, something shady might be going on. In a list, or excuse me, in a lot of traditional Lenormand guides, the snake often represents an evil or manipulative woman, especially a temptress or mistress desperate to lure virtuous partners away from their spouses. It's not hard to figure out what biblical allegories led early Lenormand readers to draw this conclusion, but I reject it because it's sexist, heteronormative, and weird. <laughs> I love this. The snake is just as likely to be a deceitful partner as it is to be the temptress, but also the snake is a snake. It can be any gender and it doesn't always have to do with sex and affairs. It can present itself in any aspect of your life. The snake is anyone out to undermine your success. Take what you have and generally just stir shit up and make trouble for you. I love the way this guidebook is written. Oh my gosh. The snake might be a jealous frenemy, a two-faced colleague at work, a passive-aggressive family member, or a bitter ex. It could also be who you least expect. The snake card warns you to take a second look at the people you let into your life, look out for toxic behavior and emotional vampires. However, the snake isn't always someone else. Sometimes the call is coming from inside the house. Sometimes it can reflect things you're dealing with internally. The snake can represent your own negative thoughts, bad habits, trauma, or emotional struggles. The snake might be someone, something inside you that you need to deal with or work on. Now that's really interesting because Lenormand I find tends to focus more externally than internally as I was mentioning earlier but that does give it a bit of a personal growth spin if you did want to use the Lenormand in that way or have that option I feel like this goes there whereas most books I've read don't go there at all which is really interesting reading the snake Traditionally, the closer the snake falls to the Quarant or Significator card, the more immediate the danger. The cards immediately surrounding the snake may give hints as to where your problem lies. Now, that's what you would look like look at if you were in a larger spread. In this case, we're just doing like a word, word, word kind of Lenormand reading. Um, and let's see. The fox points to a work issue. The dog implies a friend might not have entirely good intentions, and you definitely don't want a snake near your house, your heart, or the cards representing your loved ones. With that in mind, there aren't many combinations you can make with a snake that aren't, aren't inherently negative. Um, your best bet is probably to find it alongside other negative cards like the coffin or the scythe as described in the combinations below. They can end up canceling each other out in one of those rare instances where two wrongs can make a right. Otherwise, it's pretty much always a warning. However, I will also note that one of my favorite ever descriptions of the snake card comes from Caitlin Matthews, who in the complete Lenormand Oracle Handbook refers to the snake as an iconic bitch. I love that. And I think there's nothing wrong with being an iconic bitch. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> in fact, there might even be ways you need to invite some iconic bitch energy into your life. So consider how you might apply that to your readings when the snake comes up. So next it says sister cards are the scythe, the fox, and the mice, and combinations. So it does not have the snake and the sun. Um, but let's take a look at the snake and the star because that's pretty similar as far as the star is also about like positivity or can be, right? Um, can be about success and things like that. So it says the snake and the star is someone trying to dull your shine or ape your success. So in this case, the snake and the sun together could indicate that someone's raining on my parade, right? There's somebody like, like maybe I'm in a really good mood and somebody's like, just like trampling all over it, whether they mean to or not, right? So then we have 
questions for the snake. How can I rid myself of jealous or negative people in my life? Who in my life is trustworthy and who is better held at arm's length? To what toxic behaviors or toxic people am I giving too much of my time and energy? So it really is taking a deeper spin um, around these cards to give you different ways of looking at them. So let's take a look now at the sun, which is card 31. 31, the sun. Uh, happiness, success, achievement, positive outcome. So because this comes after the snake, right? When we look at this in a linear way, if the snake came first in the same reading and then I had, sorry, if the sun came first and then I had the snake, I would read this as starting off the day good, but then trouble comes, kind of wrecks it, right? So because it's in this order and because both the cards following the snake are positive cards, I feel like whatever trouble starts off in the morning tomorrow, it's going to resolve itself and everything's going to be fine, right? Overall, that's what I take away from it. And let's finally take a look at Clover just to look at the basic meanings. I can even use this front part. A stroke of good luck, a small victory. Yeah, so I feel like my original reading really sticks, but that gives you an idea, I think, of how this book reads. I'm, I really like the cheekiness of it. It's very approachable. It kind of steps uh, a little bit away from tradition. Not, I'm not saying it doesn't use the same traditional foundations for instructions. I don't know that until I've spent more time with it. But it certainly does give that sort of modern, relatable feeling to learning about Lenormand. So if you're curious, this is actually a really great little set, really affordable. And I feel like you get a lot more with it than you normally get with like little Lenormand sets like this. Like as an example, here's my um, 1889 Lenormand and it comes with, this is pretty typical for a Lenormand deck. You get like a little book. This is chunkier than a lot of times that you get. And you do get some basic instructions and you get some basic sort of write-ups on the cards, right, and what they mean. This is very common with Lenormand because the readings, the, the interpretations of the cards are usually incredibly straightforward and simple. Um, so this is what you normally find. But if you're new to Lenormand, getting a set that has a much more comprehensive little book with it is a great way to do it. And before this, I'm trying to think, the Celtic Lenormand comes with a pretty decent guidebook. I'd say it's between this and this kind of guidebook. Um, but otherwise all of my Lenormand decks that have come with really, really good guidebooks have been independent decks. Um, so this is a really great little set. I'm pretty impressed, I have to say. And the cards are perfectly usable. They're clean. They're simple. They'd be easy to read. Gotta love a unicorn in the writer card. I know we've already seen it, but I was gonna, I was gonna point at it again. Um, I really enjoy this. It's, again, it's all you need in a Lenormand deck and the cards aren't, um, super tiny, but they're also not super huge. So if you did want to lay out a grand tableau on your kitchen table or something, you could totally do that with you. There's my unicorn. There she is. So cute. Um, and I think that actually given the way that the cards are made, um, and the artwork choices that are present here, such as, I feel like we actually get just a, a titch more diversity than we would normally see in a Lenormand deck. And I really, really love the way that the Quarantine Partner cards are handled. You don't necessarily need a whole bunch of extra cards, right? Um, and the reason that matters is because when you're reading in a larger spread, you, or you're using these cards to anchor a reading, you want to know which one is for the sitter, so that's you or the person you're reading for, and then which card represents the significant person that they're asking for a, a question about, or that you're asking a question about. Um, sometimes I do things with Lenormand where, for example, um, I'll go, what's going on between me and this other person, right? And so I'll shuffle, and then I'll go from the top of the deck when I'm ready, and I'll start turning cards until I find the Quarant card, which would represent me in this situation. I'm keeping them in order because I need to go back through. I'm going to see it like a like a loop. I'll explain in a second. But I keep going until I find the Quarant card, which will be now at the bottom of the deck because this is what I wanted to demonstrate naturally. Um, okay, so there's the partner card. So we have, there's the partner. Then we have love, letter, child, scythe, the ways or the path, book, stars, and there's the Quarant. So between me, the Quarant over here, and the partner, there's love, letter, child, scythe, ways, book, star, right? So sometimes I've done readings like that where I'm looking for what's between. Um, and then if for some reason, I guess there, I would always have hit both of them in whatever order, right, in the deck. The other thing sometimes it's fun to do with Lenormand is to go, what do I need to know about my job? And then whatever card you associate with your job, maybe it's the tower card, right? So you shuffle, what do I need to know about my job? And you turn the deck over and you look for the tower card. There it is. And you have the rider, the tower, and the key. So there's something I don't know I'm going to get news about, right, perhaps. There's all kinds of different ways. 
that you can work with Lenormand. And it's a really fun, simple, snappy system for just getting quick answers. If I got a situation going on in my life, I almost always reach for Lenormand first to find out what the heck is going on. And then I'll dip into tarot to get more details about the situation. So it's, this is a great little deck. I'm gonna stop gushing, but I think it's pretty great. So we are going to do a little fanny fan because that's what I like to do. There's not as many cards, so I've gotta be, oh, okay. You know what? I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna move the whole thing over because that was a really nice fan. It's just not centered. There we go. Look at that. And here we go. So that was the cute little Lenormand. I will have a link down below to this book on Amazon because I know you can find it consistently there. But do check out other discount shops. Like make sure you check out Half Price Books if you're in the States or um, Book Outlet if you're in Canada or in the US. There's a US book outlet and a Canadian book outlet. So check those or any other discount book shops because this is and it's not expensive either way, right? So however you want to pick it up. But I think it's a great little resource and it would be worth buying just for the book. But the deck is decent and totally usable. So this would also be a really fun gift for somebody who is interested in Lenormand. Or if you're just, you don't want to invest a lot because you don't even know if you'll work with the system. Like this, I feel like is such an easy approachable set. I'm going to stop gushing now, but I'm pretty pleased with it. So that is the cute little Lenormand. As always, thank you so, so much for joining me and spending your precious time here on this channel. I appreciate it so much. Please do remember to click the like button if you enjoyed this video or you found value in it. Subscribe if you're new here and don't forget to click the notification bell so that you are notified of all my future videos and live streams. And remember, if you are on a mobile device, you have to enable those notifications through your device or you, you won't get them. So just a tip. Anyways, thank you again so, so much, and may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye, guys.